animals on the lowlands are around us all the time, but long ago and years ago there were other animals here. Find a hare who sits on a stone in the sunshine. Follow the hare as it leaps through the grass. Follow the hare over the field where the rabbits play, hopping home to the castle where they dig burrows under the stone. While the sun shines, a fierce fox sneaks through a leafy clearing. A leaping lynx prowls through gr- the grass. An eagle soars, flying across the moor, past the old windmill, the creepy haunted house, the crumbling castle, faster than a car. It closes giant wings and stoops to kill. But a beaver slaps the water in the deep dark lake. And a fast, tiny hare flashes to safety, while a wolf watches quietly from the shadows. As the sun sets, those wolves gather, slipping silently into the twinkle twinkle, from the caves below the waterfall. From the pool below the waterfall, from a shadow under the trees, from a destroyed house, a big, big grey wolves, they go hunting down dark trails under branches of the tall trees. The hedgehog drinking at the lake is too prickly for wolves. The red squirrel slips through its portal. It's too clever. The bristling brown bear is too big. So the wolves run on, a whisper, a shadow, a smoke of fur and fangs, slipping down the dale and up the hillside, past the houses, past the farms, into the trees, while a giant barn owl sits carefully on an old branch and watches all the animals of the night. Under the roof of the leaves and branches, past the pillars of tree trunks, the moose claims his kingdom of rocks and cliffs and trees. The ruler of the moorlands, but even he stops by the scary forest where a snowy owl calls. A long empty voice like the goats of lost children echoing through the forests as the owl swoops between the trees, flies through the arches of the old bridge and disappears.